So in this video, we're going to talk about antelope audio. Antelope audio has been around for years. I know in the past, they had some issues, but in this video, I want to talk about the Zen Q because that's the audio interface that I have. It has some problems and I have a solution for those problems. And that's why I'm creating this video. Before I reached out to customer service, here's some of the things I did. I always do Windows optimizations. So I'm not going to walk you through that. I did a video on this. Check that out if you want to optimize Windows for audio. But what I did do, I restarted my machine. I went into the BIOS. My machine, I will hold the delete key and it will go into the BIOS. Your machine might be slightly different. You got to read the manual. Once I was in the BIOS, I looked for two things. I looked for C-State and Turbo Boost. With C-State, I had no issues, but disabling Turbo Boost, a few plugins, my CPU was maxing out for whatever reason. Pops and clicks were still there regardless if C-State or Turbo Boost was on or off. So I started thinking, what can the problem be? I don't want to return the audio interface because I love the DSP plugins. In my opinion, they got some of the best plugins out there. The interface sounds amazing. Another issue that I had, and this was kind of the moment where I kind of figured out what the problem was. I would go ahead and grab the volume knob. And the minute I would do that, the audio dipped. So I told myself, either this unit is defective and you take it a hold of customer service and see if they will exchange it for me. So I explained to them what was happening. They told me to do everything that I already did. But the one thing that they did mention, and I didn't do, and I was thinking about it, to try different USB ports. So I had this unit hooked up to my uh, three USB 3.0. By the way, there's a uh, Thunderbolt version of this interface. I don't have it. My computer does support Thunderbolt, but I went with the USB version. It's a little cheaper. I hooked it up to the legacy USB, legacy uh, one, two, and the problem got a little better, but the pops and clicks were still there. I constantly had to change my buffer. Well, to be honest, that didn't even make a difference sometimes. Sometimes it helped, but not always. Now, so at this point, I'm really frustrated. I want to mix. I want to do my work. I can't make these YouTube videos because the pops and clicks come out in the recordings. So I'm really annoyed. I'm about to grab my old audio interface, connect this, and return this one back. So I decided to try one last thing. I remember back in the Windows 98, 95, back in those days, if you will hook up a printer that was bus power, the computer will tell you that it'll run out of power. You'll get this little pop-up. I'll try to have it here on the screen for you to see the message. You know, nowadays that doesn't really happen, but I told myself, what about if this unit doesn't have enough power? So if we take a look at the USB cable that ships with this unit, it's slightly different. Now I got hard drives that use these type of cables. Now look, if you've never seen one of these before, you have two USB connections. Why is it like that? Because if you just had this unit plugged into one USB, it wouldn't have enough power to operate. So what they ended up doing, you have this little add-on here, and it's going to tap into the five volts of the USB. There's no data or anything like that. The data is happening here. This is just grabbing five volts from the next USB slot. So I told myself, USB is only five volts. What about if I go ahead and use one of these? And that's exactly what I did. I hooked up the extra USB cable and guess what? Problem disappeared. I haven't had any problems since I did this. And that's why I'm making this video because some of you guys out there might have this audio interface. You know, it could be the Zen Q or the Go version. Uh, let me see. I think I have it here somewhere. Yes, the Zen Go. It's also, there's two. I believe this interface can take both uh, Thunderbolt and USB at the same time. Let's scroll down. Yes. I don't know. So if you have one of those and you are using USB and you're going through this exact same problem, you can try this. The only way you can mess up your audio interface is if you plug into anything higher than five volts. So this is just a regular phone charger from an old uh, iPhone that I had and it solved my problem. So I currently have it hooked up to an isolation transformer. I have the amplifiers that's driving my NS10s hooked up to that isolation transformer. And now I also have this adapter. Although you don't really need to plug this into a isolation transformer, long story short, this isn't really tapping into ground. I'll just keep it at that. Please give that a try. You know, I get it, not everybody understands or cares how these cables work. They just wanna plug it in and make sure things work. Amazed that nobody else has made a video about this. It would not hurt Antelope Audio to ship their units with one of these uh, five volt adapters. 
And hopefully one of you guys out there can find this useful. And if you did, let me know. So the best way to get a hold of me is either email or down below. I want to thank you for watching this video. This is Ray. I'm out of here. Later.